Welcome everyone. I'm glad for you to join me today. We're going to speak about data quality and how important it is in our clinical trials. I know that most of you are involved in clinical research of one way or another, and so it really is important for all of our hard work to be able to be utilized in analyses at the end of the day. So our learning objectives today, we're going to speak about a quality system approach for assuring appropriate data quality. And then we'll identify data discrepancies, errors, outliers, and bias, and how to assess their importance. Describe how poor data quality may or may not impact study operations or analyses. And compare and contrast common approaches to discrepancy identification and resolution. We look at data quality, and it really begins from the top of our organization. The upper management, the infrastructure of our organization really needs to be committed to allowing us the ability to conduct good clinical trials, having the infrastructure and the necessary resources to do that. The responsibility for data quality relies on everyone who's working on those trials, not only data management, but everyone who has a part in the conduct of the clinical trial. Basically, the quality of the data involves more than just compliance. I would expect that most of you have had some kind of training involved in the ICH E6 revision 2, which basically was the first time in 19 years that good clinical practices segment had been updated. And when you look at the approach of the revision 2 amendment, it basically focuses significantly on data quality and how that data quality really is integral in our conduct of the clinical trial, but also when we look at certain efficiencies now that the agencies at best have recognized that, let's say, the way that we did 100% SDV source document verification, 100% QC of the database may not necessarily be the way that of moving forward since we've had risk-based monitoring. But when we look at the best practices that are involved with data quality, we know that the organization should have a quality policy, a quality assurance department that is strongly supported by upper management, understood by the entire staff of the organization, and supported by operational procedures. And we're talking about standard operating procedures as part of our quality initiative. We want to use, from a data management perspective, using standardized or validated data collection and handling processes. We talk about looking at standards in data management with, let's say, C Dash as the standard data collection instruments that will map easily to C disk variables, which is the standard and the required format for our data to be used for submissions to the agency. We want to include as few steps as possible in the data collection and data handling processes, thereby eliminating chances for error. And this is one thing that auditors do look for is the instructions, let's say, on data handling and to ensure that there are instructions. I can take you back in time. My experience, I worked for Zeneca for 15 years. And during that time, there was a study that was going to submission. It was a, an IV antibiotic compound that went to FDA for review and approval. And there were no specific data handling guidelines on how to manage comments. And as we know, most of us, and I would hope that most of you are working in an EDC environment where there is no open area for text as we might have had on case report form. So in the day when that drug was going for submission, it was paper case report form and there was a lot of comments, freewheeling comments all over the case report forms. And when the data entry was done, individuals truncated the comments in order to fit into that segmented data variable point there. I think it was a SAS 190 field length. And so people use different abbreviations for different things, such as patient and subject, etc. And when the submission went to the FDA, there was a refuse to file. And that was because of the fact that the, the comments were truncated and there was no guidance on how to make those abbreviations. So we want to ensure that we don't have 
too many iterations in the data handling processes. One of the things that data manipulation, the big, we used to call it the big M. We don't want to be accused of manipulating the data in any way. Therefore, we really want to be efficient in how we look at our data. We want to, in this last bullet here on this slide, collect only the data that are essential for the interpretation of trial results. I would expect that many of you have had to play the devil's advocate with your clinical, your study team to try to influence the powers that be that nice to have data if it's not going to be analyzed at the end of the day by biostatistics we really don't need to collect it nor do we need to collect it we don't need to clean it or write queries against it as well 